Hey, what's up, everybody? Michael Reader here, SRA Podcast. Everyone, seriously, okay, just real talk right now. I don't, I, I don't care what you had for breakfast. I don't care what you had for lunch. I don't care what you had for dinner. All right. All I care about is that you hit that subscribe button right there. Okay. So do that. And that is really a good breakfast right there. So uh, what's up, Marie Tarosian? How you doing? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? Oh, I'm doing incredible. How's life? Life is good. Exciting. Are you 10 xing life? I am. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I am. I am. Every day. Every day. I just pushing every through. <laughs> every day. Every day is a blessing. Every day is an opportunity to improve. Every day is uh, an opportunity to just, you know, uh, improve as a human being in business and life. So uh, it's a pleasure yeah. to have you on. It really is. Hey, everyone. So Marie Tarosian, um, I've known Marie for a couple of years now. She is a, a thriving entrepreneur out in Florida, down in the Miami area, right? Yes, sir. Miami. Awesome. So, you know, Marie, we're going to dive into all things. Marie, all things, you know, your like, you know, your your background as a CPA, helping other CPAs now, the Profit Lab. Uh, but just tell the audience, you know, uh, who you are and what you're all about in the business world. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, Marie Sturgeon, um started my my career as an auditor, uh, became a CPA, um, also certified uh, management accountant as well. And I started my uh entrepreneur journey i would say in 2018 like really solid because <laughs> i think i tried it a few times um i tried it back in 2016 and i went off doing a little bit of consulting on the side um and uh, went back to full time and then 2018 uh when my uh daughter was going to be born um you know i just didn't want to come back to a full-time position so that was my dec decision where i was like i'm all in or all out and um, and I started my CPA firm in January 2020, just before COVID. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, just like any other entrepreneur, I've, I've hit every possible uh, you know roadblock you can think of. And uh, but you know, I uh, I uh, worked through them. I worked through them. As a business owner, you have to do that. You have to figure it out what is the next roadblock and push through. And for me, one of the biggest things has been to invest in education whatever it is that you're lacking invest in it yeah. so you understand what you need to do yeah wow so much there so much there i mean and we're gonna i, I just like so many things that i don't even know where to start like you know and like <laughs> i got the espresso i got the espresso going and so Woo, I let's gotta, do it yeah, let's do it right i i gotta take the advice on on, on the wall behind you mike relax mike relax right so yes. relax um, and grow <laughs> relax and grow exactly because if you don't relax that'll stunt your growth right so yeah man like you know i mean i just think that you know that 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 conversation about that entre that, that that entrepreneur topic is such a mm -hmm. fascinating conversation topic because you know marie just like i do like we know like we talk to people like so like everyone out there wants to be an entrepreneur it's such a yes. it's such a sexy buzzword you know and and uh it's trendy yes. and you know but man it's it's easier said than done and it's not for everyone but it is for people and um it, it, it is for certain people and what you said when you were you know telling your your story it like 20 like i, I tried to be an entrepreneur a few times there were roadblocks <laughs> But, you know, and then, and that it's just like, if you are re like, if you really are, do have entrepreneurial spirit in your blood, um, then that like, you know, you know that that's just part of the journey and roadblocks yes. and try, fail, try, fail, try, fail. Um, yes. Don't, don't let the failures um, deter you. Keep going, learn from them, improve, optimize. And um, just, just in your, in, 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 in you speaking right there, I just heard a natural entrepreneur speaking because what you were just talking about was the is the classic and true entrepreneurial story. Thank you. Thank you. It, it has been. I think uh, thinking back and, you know, sometimes, you know, as we get a little bit older, like you kind of start analyzing yourself. Why do you do things a certain way? And for me, as I thought back, um, and maybe something that Grant said at some point, and by the way, you know, I, my mentor is, you know, Grant Cardone. So Grant something says about, you know, figure out your story and 
you know, as I was thinking about why do I want to be an entrepreneur and why am I going after this so much? Why am I taking all these risks, putting my family in all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, risk? Um, and that's because, um, you know, when I was about 12, I, you know, I saw my dad tra- taking that risk back in, you know, my country in Lebanon and, you know, the wars came and all that and other people came and every time he would switch to something else that was hot, whatever it was, because he wanted to, he had that entrepreneurial, uh, uh, you know, blood, right? Like he always wanted to do that and he did it. And I would see him through the struggles and through the rewards too. So that was something I feel like I never thought about it, but as I'm older now and going through it, it just really hit me. I'm like, I kind of went through it with him. I was helping him every day. So it's kind of natural that I always thought that I would have a business one day, right? Just never really thought of what it was going to be. And um, yeah, and (laughs) here we are. (laughs) Yeah, so like uh, your your dad um, was a a, was an entrepreneur in Lebanon. Yes, yes. I mean, I think we started with first he was he had a shop where he sold you know, uh, wool, like people used to actually make their own little sweaters back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, when in Lebanon, the doors kind of open and there was more influx of like, you know, clothing readily available, like people stopped doing that. Um, and so then he switched to, I think, uh, kids clothing, then it was, you know, intimate, then it was like a deli shop, and then it was <laughs> always, wow. and, like different, <laughs> different things. And I was like literally helping him with it what i realized afterwards like i was doing like basic accounting without anyone teaching me yeah um, you know i was doing like the receiving the you know tracking the bills and doing the cash register ca- you know checking the cash it was correct i love it that's I awesome as i was doing all that yeah <laughs> part of the business oh man that's awesome. and then so when did you come to the states um i came to the states in 2004 okay yeah um, you know, I met my husband um, in 2002. Um, I was in Montreal, Canada at the time. And yep. uh, and then I moved down to Miami in 2004. We got married. We're, obviously, we're still together. We have two kids, beautiful kids, my son and my daughter. And uh, yeah, we've, I've been here ever since. I, I went to college here, FIU, got my bachelor's, master's, and the CPA, of course, in Florida. Yeah, amazing. Good for you and good for your whole family. <laughs> Thank you, but, like, sir. W- was it like, um, like, did you see, like, was your dad struggling as an entrepreneur or or maybe he was, it didn't show it? Like, was it hard? Because I can only imagine being a, an entrepreneur in Lebanon. It, it's hard to be an entrepreneur no matter where you are, <laughs> but to be in Lebanon compared to America, you know, like the, the economic climate, not like, or, you know, the, the, the opportunity to, you know, to develop a business and, you know, and everything that goes into business ownership, like, like we're, I, I just like, like, um, you know, like, I just, I, I just love to hear those entrepreneur stories of, you know, entrepreneurs in other countries. Um, and yeah. just, like, you know, I'm really great. Like, I just, uh, like, that's really present for me. Like when, 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 when you're telling your story, like, like, was he just like, 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 were there a lot of struggles? I imagine there were, but you know, you tell Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. My, my dad, you know, had a fairly high school education, so he didn't have any, let's say, a, a college degree or anything in business that could help him, you know, even from a, let's say, from a book standpoint, you know, what is business management or what is anything. Yeah. Uh, but he was an avid reader and he would read a lot of, you know, any any information that he would find in this interesting. Um, having his business, I think it was something that he started feeling the need for it um, because he traveled at some point, he was working uh, in another country for a while, and so when he returned, that was something it was building up in, inside of him. So, and uh, he did his best. He made the best de- decisions he could. I could see him taking more risks. He was comfortable taking a loan and then paying it back. Let's say, um, you know, in an entrepreneurial world, I think um, there's that fear of like how I'm going to pay it back or whatever but sometimes if you're able to take the loan and be able to pay it back because you have a good business then that's a great way for for you to scale fast um so my dad sometimes had to do that right because he didn't have a massive capital yet nothing so i saw him taking those risks that that you know nobody taught him he was just going off of what what he felt he could actually achieve and it was a struggle it it was a struggle Yeah. yeah Wow. I mean, there were no programs like here where you can actually get that information. And we're talking back in, you know, 
what was it like 1996 1995 you know we're talking back in the day there was no internet in lebanon we couldn't research information um so it was very difficult time for him to you know even get information you know online where here we can kind of get a, a good information maybe online but you would spend hours looking for it yeah absolutely um you know that's it's really interesting stuff right there you know i, I feel in my opinion in my experience like and, and you know, like i think that there's just no better education than real world experience doing it yourself trial and error doing it yourself and you know yeah. investing in education and professional development you know like you know like like you know like grant cardone's program which is great um and others out there you know i have my own mentors i i i have my own yes consultants and training programs that i've went through and stuff like that and they're all great and yeah. i pick up things from them and it's great but really, mm -hmm. what I pick up the most is just through my own day to day in the practice, like in in practice, getting my hands dirty in the trenches, what works, what doesn't. Yes. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I mean, and like so what, like, OK, so now let's pivot more to like your entrepreneurial journey that really started, you know, on and off, on and off starting in 2018. Um, so your daughter was born in 2018. Did I hear that correctly or like around then? Yes. Okay. Yes. And congratulations, by the way. Um, Thank you. So, uh, like, let's see. So, so, so people were, were airing this right now in August of 2022. So, uh, you know, so she's three or four years old now, uh, or maybe mm -hmm. yeah, three or four. So awesome. I got a two year old. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, so like, okay, you were an auditor, like you were an auditor, like you came out of like, were you an auditor and then you pivoted to entrepreneur or like, were you a certified management account? No. So I was, I, I, I was in audit for about two and a half years. And for me, auditing was really great experience, but it, I, 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 at the time I didn't understand that I would express myself saying, I feel like a robot. I don't, I don't see the point of what I'm doing. Um, and that was the best ex explanation I would give to my senior and my manager at the time. Um, and uh, so I kind of left the, the public sector after two and a half years, but I would say that those two and a half years were like the best, the best kind of experiences I've had because it makes me um, a really great accountant, controller, CFO that I am now. Um, so I pivoted from there to uh, accounting manager in a private nonprofit um, here in, in, in Florida, fairly large uh, at the time. And, uh, and I worked there for about eight years, moving up the ladder from accounting manager to controller, acting CFO, and then uh, chief admin officer slash CFO. Um, and I went from just overseeing accounting and accounting reports to, you know, starting to forecast, you know, budget and all that, and then payroll and then HR, uh, IT management, <laughs> um, you know, facilities oversight. I mean, I was just like thrown in there. Can you oversee this? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm a type of person that I do want to learn all the time and I want the next challenge. And so I will say yes. I will literally say yes to almost everything uh, because I do want to learn. And that, I believe, helped me, helped me fast track my learning because, you know, I came to the U.S. kind of, you know, later on in life. I was like 25 already. By the time I graduated, I was almost 30. Um, so for me, it was like, I got to catch up to this <laughs> Yeah. You know, I got to make that experience like in a shorter time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah. And I was uh, and I stayed through with that uh, with that uh, nonprofit until 2018. So and then I switched out to being a full time consultant and uh, entrepreneurial journey started there. Awesome. So uh, did your family come from Beirut? Were you guys in Beirut or somewhere else? Uh, yeah. In the outskirts of Beirut. Yeah. More of the Armenian sector. Okay. And okay. So as you were talking right there, I'm just envisioning um, <laughs> where you are at, like in your, like as a, a as a kid and, and into teenage years and um, you're on the streets of like Beirut or out of, or outer Beirut, like helping your dad with like all of his miscellaneous businesses, like hustling and bustling and, you know, getting thrown in the fire and this and this and this. And now here you are and you are a, like an auditor and you feel like a robot. And I just feel like if I came from that like that, like that upbringing with like the, the the hustle and bustle, like you know, on the streets of Beirut, like you know, and now I'm an auto. Like I, I would just feel like, oh, this sucks. Like, <laughs> like, for, and I know, mo like, whatever the money is, right? Like, like maybe you're an auditor making, bank, like, maybe you're making bank as an auditor, you know. But like, if like, um, eh, but if you feel like a robot, you know, that's not good. Yeah.
No, it's not good. It didn't feel right. Like, um, and I, I remember um, at every review, you know, obviously I'm doing certain things good and other things that I have to work more on, you know, but uh, the, the, the almost every positive review <laughs> was always the client loves you. You have great communication skills. They always want to work with you. And that's because I'm this very outgoing, energetic person. And I didn't fit the very, uh, you know, square, typical, technical, uh, you know, accountant they envisioned. So I wasn't fitting that auditor role per se, even though I was doing the job perfectly fine. It just, you know, naturally my best skills were talking to people. <laughs> so I just, and it was just repeating it. And, and I didn't even realize, it didn't even hit me until much later. Like when I would be um, at the, the nonprofit I was working, I would work with the board members. And when they would meet me, they would say, wow, you, you don't, you're, you're not a typical accountant. You don't sound like that. I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And uh, of course, now, you know, one of my own hashtags is not your typical CPA. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's where it comes from, because people would tell me constantly, you, you don't sound like a typical CPA. I'm like, OK, I guess that's my strength. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, and it's a compliment, too. Um, most yeah. people think like, you know, that stereotypical CPA is just very, you know, antisocial, likes to just, you know, just. Yeah. Stay away from people and just you know crunch numbers into the tax software and the bookkeeping and and is uh, always just like um, not always but you know I mean they tend to be conservative by nature and introvert they are yes and um, and and it's important you know like I, I think that it's good to have like that stereotypical CPA especially the one you know I mean like you know that are really uh, good what they do um, accounting tax you know. Um, they're they're a good alter ego to you know that 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 hustle and bustle and entrepreneur that that is like on the go and like you know thinking of yes. ideas and this is that's good to have you know that alter ego like you know well hey you know think about that or you think about it because like the CPA puts those things in the in the brain but uh, right right but you know I mean also and we're you know this is a, a perfect dovetail into what we're going to talk about you know because um, I'm I'm fascinated with what you're doing in the CPA industry um, like helping other CPAs. Um, you know, uh, like a lot of CPAs also, they, they get in their own way um, because they, you know, the, like they're good at what they do, but you need, you need clients, right? Like if, you know, like yes. if you want to be a self, if you want to be a self-employed CPA, whether you're solo or have your own firm with like team members, you got to like, where you get yes. your clients from, you know, like how are you going to get clients from hello to yes? And so, um, wow. I mean, there's just, uh, so, and then like the stuff, like also the stuff that you learn when you were an auditor, uh, a certified management accountant, like working with the not-for-profit, like you learn the technical skill set. See, I think that's something that you and I have in common. Like we are, we are not your normal CPA in, in yeah. a very good way. But with that being said, like we're very like 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 we're entrepreneurial CPAs. When most CPAs are not yes. are, are not entrepreneurial. Yes. Um, but we like the, the technical skill. Like, but we're still technically trained accountants. Like, yes. I, like when I'm hiring people on my team and when, like, and when I'm observing the work from like, you know, the stuff that my client sends me from their old CPA, um, oh, yeah. I, like I can, I can spot quality work versus, versus non-quality work. And, and so I, I still like, as we move on in our entrepreneurial journey, it's in, like, as we like, like you and I, like we're graduating to that next level of like, you know, entrepreneur and yes. But but like uh, along that journey, we develop this technical skill set as accountants, and that and and that provides value to not only us but also to our clients. Because whatever industry our clients are in, you know, accounting and tax yes. is a, is an integral, you know, CFO is an integral part of absolutely. any business. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, even until now, like I, I can spot things that most people would miss every time a. <laughs> new client comes in I mean recently actually this morning I was talking about it on, on my show actually and you might want to come on one of my shows one of these days um, and I'm available um, I'm available whenever just speak to my agent you know <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, we're gonna pick a very good topic and we're gonna have a nice conversation on coffee time um, and uh, so I was actually talking about a, a client that came my way and then you know, when we look at the, the financials and right away you start seeing how much of a mess is created and the amount of corrections that needs to be done. And uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. We can see the red flags that most people miss. The business owner that is, let's say, a possibly 
one of the examples I gave is like they take out these massive withdrawals and then you know they don't really have any backup as to what it is and you see these negatives in equity like what have you done like what is this for what it should not be negative here so you know a lot of negatives on the on, on the balance sheet is like uh they're not supposed to be there what did you do um and that kind of stuff where it's like very quickly we can as right away see it and uh you know a, a bookkeeper or someone that internally a friend that's helping out is not going to be able to see that's why we're technical we know exactly what we're looking for um and we can see it right away we don't have to dig much <laughs> to see this right and what, yeah. what i found fascinating over uh what i'm finding fascinating more and more as time goes on throughout the months and years is so the industry is so commoditized and what i mean by that is you know like yes. our block has really commoditized tax and there's a and there's yes. a lot of like bookkeeping firms out there that you know that do bookkeeping but what they really do is data entry with making assumptions yes. and they also really don't care and what i mean by that is the commoditization <laughs> the commoditization of the industry of the accounting and tax industry absolutely uh, what what like what what that means is that you know you have like providers like I'm not like I don't want to bash H&R Block but there's but there is there there are like truths here and the truth is yeah. H&R Block and TurboTax um Tax Act you know like they've all they all they've all brainwashed clients now uh, mm -hmm. the market to think that like you mm -hmm. know tax return preparation service is like $100 and there are and you know and so now the the majority of the market thinks that like they don't respect the value in tax preparation and so exactly you know and like and, and and you know and so um and 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 with bookkeeping bookkeeping is you know the market thinks bookkeeping is this thing that you know they pay their accountant a couple hundred bucks a month to do if not less and yeah and their accountant like you know like you know like crunches some numbers and like gives them a report the client has no freaking clue what they're looking at and they just assume it's right because it must be right because you know but you know, like, <laughs> They're not like I don't like I don't know how much they're training the people over H and R Block to do like you know more advanced tax returns and um, right you know I, I don't know and then and 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 so now what's happening in my opinion is because the market so I, I'll you know like because the market had like sees these types of um, compliance services as low value. Yes. Now, now the the accountants that are doing them that 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 don't have the I don't want to say spine or what like the don't have the or courage. It's not really spine or courage. They, they just they they just can't like stand up for themselves and 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 stand by the values. Yes. They're afraid that the clients yes. leave them. And because of that, yes. in my opinion, and this is in my opinion, and I make an assumption here, but I just see trends. I think because of all that, they're shortcutting the quality control process. They're like, oh, I'm only getting paid a little bit to do this anyways, so I'm just gonna like rush it through and the client doesn't know what I'm looking at anyways, what they're looking at anyways. And I'm not like saying that that's going on, but I feel like that's what's going on because like all of the, all of the, I'm connecting all the dots. I'm just like, well, like, you know, like so, you know, and and so, um, and, and and that's a big problem with, with, uh, with our industry because you have a lot of these uh, accounting and tax professionals that monetize their practice with the tax preparation and or the bookkeeping and they're and that's how they monetize it but then what they fall into this trap where like their clients are calling them throughout the year for advice and they're afraid to send them an invoice for that advice because they feel like the clients can break like, oh, what 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 yeah. I, I come to you every year for my taxes you're charging me for this i'm going elsewhere and there are other people out there that'll give it away for free and um right. and so then accountants get you know and a lot of accountants right like getting back to like you know like introvert, not really people person, just want to stick behind it. Like they don't want to have that, like avoid, like they like, like they don't want to have that conversation with the client. They just kind of bite the bullet and there's like, ugh, and they just continue to do what they do. But inside, I, I feel like they're not happy because they know that they're more valuable. They can't charge, they want to charge more, but they can't because the client's going to leave them. And so they're like stuck in this <laughs> yes. like difficult spot. It's and a I fear. Think, yeah, it's a fear. And yeah. so, um, and, and that's just a, that is just a, a very, um, that, in my opinion, that is a uh, that is something that is very present and real in the accounting and tax industry today. Um, the commoditization of it has led to lower prices. Lower prices have uh, uh, the, uh, accountants are feared to char are they feared to charge more because there are other accounts out there that will give it away for free. And and then so so how do you charge more? You know, and so like so and then like you know and and and, and all right so. So all of that. So that's that. Right. So like we'll put that to the side. So the CPA industry, you know, like 
Like we, we talked about a lot of things that CPAs are struggling with, but they're struggling with more things too, like, you know, marketing themselves yeah. and getting sales. Like, what are you like a, a couple things here? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is one of the same and like, you know, you, you, you drive this, right? Marie, like, um, what are you doing to help other CPAs today in, in your, in your self-employed endeavors? And, and what is the profit lab? Um, I'll just let yeah. you take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think you did make a very good segue with when you talked about the uh, commod- the commoditation, <laughs> commoditation yeah. uh, of our industry, because that is what I hit every single time in 2020. I'm trying to start a business here. And every time I would turn around, it would be like, well, someone else can do it. My bookkeeping for, let's say, $45 an hour. I'm like, well, I'm not a bookkeeper. I'm a CPA. <laughs> I'm a CFO. <laughs> I charge 150 at, let's say, at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, and but for me, I struggled, uh, you know, kind of explaining my value as well a little bit, but I was not willing to give it. That was one thing that I feel that helped me push Good through. You. Good for you. So I did not want to drop my price. I did my best with my you know ability to to explain like hey i I've, I've been able to do this 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 for my for my uh employer now i'm out here helping you guys out so yes i can do your bookkeeping but i can also sit down with you every every month and advise you on what you're looking at so i can help guide you to go on the next level no bookkeeper is going to do that for you so bookkeeping is only the little data stuff that we're going to do for you but here's what i can do for you on top of that so i did my best right um, and that brought me to uh, the next step that I did in my firm was learn how to package my prices. So I literally, I think end of 2020, maybe early 2021, I, I can't even remember because I've been doing it for a while. I packaged my prices. I stopped doing hourly rates. I don't have an hourly rate. So when people would ask me, I would say it's $500 an hour. Or we can do a special package for you. And here are three different packages to choose from based on your budget. So then they have a choice. So it's more like, you know, here's the different features and the benefits of uh, the package. This is what you get. You know, if you want to do custom, we can do a custom one too. (laughs) So I think one of the sad things for our our industry, and this is where my mission came about, and it's going to bring me to telling you about the Profit Lab, is I felt like there's so many of other CPAs like me that are maybe a little bit more on the technical side. Imagine I was the outgoing person I was struggling. (laughs) Imagine just the person that is more technical and slightly introverted and how can I help them be able to communicate their value and not keep dropping prices because the example I would make all the time is like, would you pay less money to have a general surgeon take out your gallbladder or would you rather pay full price for someone who knows how to take out a gallbladder yeah which yeah. doctor would you choose no and brainer. most people would be like uh no i want to go to a, to a specialist okay so i'm the specialist so i demand this price i am not the general surgeon i'm the specialist so this is something where I felt like now it became a passion for me that I'm like, okay, I need to help everyone in my industry bring about this change of how they first perceive themselves, because that's a mindset thing, all right? How they perceive themselves and then bring more tools that help me, like the ones up here, uh, the 10X stuff, um, that help me push me, be able to exp- express myself better. And by no means am I, you know, completely perfect because you're always learning um, and strategies always change. But one of the things, uh, you know, I worked on as well was the marketing, right? Mar- I had no idea what I was marketing. I knew I needed a website. I knew I needed a, a social media channels and I created those early on in 2018. But I didn't know what I was posting, why I was posting, who I was posting for. I didn't know who my real client was. I didn't have a persona. None of that was anywhere clear to me. I was just posting because I felt like, well, I can motivate. I'm a good motivator, (laughs) which is fine, but uh, it doesn't really get you clients. (laughs) So, um, and to make a real point here, and I've been researching other CPAs that are slightly smaller, right? I mean, your firm is slightly bigger. 
And most CPA firms that have started, like me, let's say 2020, 2018, you know, on LinkedIn, the person doesn't even exist. So how would anyone find you? Forget about the other social media. If you're not even on LinkedIn, I don't even know how you even exist as a professional. If you happen to have a website, the website can drag on to either too many services that the person is now confused, or it has just the basic information of, let's say, a map, how to get there, or who to call. That's great too, but that's now no information about what is unique about you. So I realized there's just so much need out there. <laughs> It's just, I'm like, oh my God. So I created the Profit Lab with, you know, to help not only entrepreneurs, but also specifically the CPA industry and my fellow CPAs. Because with the Profit Lab, I'm able to combine the 10X marketing and sales skills and basically being a Grand Cardone licensee, I, can, I have the materials to teach, to create workshops, webinars and all that. Uh, and coach as well, um, in combination with some of the operational and financial stuff that I've implemented in my firm. So, and I'll give you an example. In my firm, however small I am compared to some of the other firms, and I'm totally fine saying that, by the way, I'm very transparent. I have two team members that literally run all my clients. I don't have to go in too into details unless something happens or I need to have a communication, right? Or they have a question. I'm working now supporting another CPA firm that has a lot of clients. They group too fast, but they have no structure. It's a complete chaos. So I have that type of uh, systematic way of approaching things that and automations that I can set up to a certain point that it can literally simplify a CPA's firm. Um, so the Profit Lab is meant to set up all of those systems for a CPA or an entrepreneur um, to help them out. So we have we're gonna we're creating training training library for for them. Uh, so coaching packages, marketing packages that are I've created from my own experiences based on the level of let's say how big the firm or the company is, anywhere from how many uh, social media channels, the CRM system, the automations, the auditing of the system, the website, the hashtags. It's so specific because I had to learn all that. Um, one of my friends that was helping me, I guess, get the information out of my mind. <laughs> Sometimes it's up here and you, you, know, you just have to have someone ask the right questions. Um, when he was asking me those questions, he would, he would tell me, so, how much time did you spend training? How much time did you spend uh, DIYing, doing it yourself, these social media and marketing stuff? Um, how much money did you spend on, I don't know, learning from this guy or that guy? And I put it all together and then just hit me. I'm like, lost opportunities to do service, uh, trying to DIY, create my own social media stuff and figuring all this out myself over three years. I had roughly spent 100, you know, not spent, invested, 175,000, close to 200,000. I'm not feeling bad about it, but now I feel like I'm a bit like an expert. <laughs> it's like a whole new degree. So I'm at a place where I'm like, I have built so much knowledge in so many areas of the more, more like four pillars of business that I'm, I'm ready to pass that information on and teach others to, to, to help them out. And that's, that's how the Profit Lab got born. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know what? Uh, what like just what's present for me as you're as you're like as you're um, just um, diving deep into all of that, Marie, is most businesses fail, and there are common there are pattern there are common denominators amongst failed businesses, but there are those businesses that succeed, and there are common denominators in those that succeed, and uh, a lot of the stuff that you just mentioned are common denominator like those are recurring trends that you see in businesses that end up you know being successful and what is successful successful doesn't mean that you're like you know going public or that it's just like staying, right. in business, staying in business year after year after year making money um not going out of business right like not going out of business is successful right not going out of business is successful yes. and like uh having a marketing strategy having a sales strategy uh having standard operating procedures and sharpening the pencil and all of these different functions mm -hmm. of the business are vital to any business and when a business 
invests in that, you know, because you like, like I, I love how you like switched it from like I, I spend to invest because exactly right, like um, uh, because not like you you invested in in, in dollars, um, but now you you have knowledge, you have knowledge that so many business owners out there need, and and uh, and when like and and like message to all of you business owners out there that. You know, like, and you know, like, like I get it, and Marie gets it. We get it. Like, I understand. You know, like, just like I caution you, audience out there that are trying to lowball all of your vendors, that are trying to lowball everyone, um, because you're 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 looking at things too narrow mindedly. Um, uh, yes. You know, like you like uh, you like where like where are you going to spend money in one certain aspect, in one certain component that's going to result in growth that's going to be over you know like like so like and i say that because like like there is also a kind like when when people are just focusing like when they're tripping over dollars to save nickels as i like to say it um you know yes. they might they might see someone like you or me marie and not want to work with us because we're too expensive compared to the cpa down the street and and then like yeah maybe they're saving a dollar here in the short term but like they could have had like you know 50 to a hundred thousand dollars if not more revenue you know <laughs> right and so you know you got to take a step back and look at the macro and yes. understand what are the things that like because we can't guarantee anything right but like what are the things that are going to increase right. the chance for a business to be successful and stay in business say that again the question it was a rhetorical question but what like 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 oh. we like we all of us like we have to all ask ourselves like what are the things that we're going to invest in because we can't right. guarantee anything right. What are the things that are going to increase our chance of being successful? Yes. Not only in the short term, but also the long run. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I can I can tell you from my own experience, for me, what made the, the complete pivot, right? And I was willing to invest more, whether it was in dollars or my time, was when I found the right mentor. And for me, it was like opening the door of opportunity in my mind. Because when I was thinking of doing thing, uh, something one way, because I didn't know another way, right? That person, being Grant, <laughs> he just opened like all these, whoa, all these opportunities. So I would literally get out of a uh, our, you know, because I was initially in his accelerator program, and every Thursday we would be on a Zoom call. I would get out of that car, and, like, and my mom would be going. And ideas and ideas. Okay, so I can connect with this person, that person, or collaborate with this person. So suddenly you get ideas that could actually start helping you make those strategic decisions on how to grow the next step, you know. And 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 it may take you about I don't know three or four months to implement it or get a, a you know a, a positive uh, you know um, uh, stats out of that that action. But at least you're not stuck in that same place you were. Like, at least you've implemented something new. Um, for example, for me, um, I started the trainings. Um, I went, say, uh, for a two-day marketing workshop. And it was literally writing down step-by-step step what we're going to be doing based on what they teach us. And then I took a complete, I think, two, three weeks of didn't do any trainings and I was going page by page implementing every single thing I was I said I would do and most people don't do that either they go take a training they come back and they don't do anything with that stuff I was like creating a CRM system that was trying to get completely automated um, follow-up systems that was getting automated stuff that someone that small like me like the small firm like me does not even have Someone mid-size doesn't even have, but I have. So when you're creating systems that early, that means when I'm ready to, let's say, scale big, I am ready. So that's what a type of, that kind of a mentor or someone that's like, let's say now like me that has implemented what my mentor taught me, that's the type of impact you're going to get. And for me, I can only tell from my own experience. Absolutely. And creating systems is so important. It's 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 easier said yes. than done, but it can be done. And it's just one of it's it's you, you just gotta do it. You know, like once you build the system, then the system will run on its own. But building the system and just investing yes. in building the system. And what I hear a lot from you is that you've been building the system these last couple of years, but now the system is starting to run on its own. And that's what it's all yep. about. That's how you make yeah. more money. That's how you stay in business. That's how you increase your your uh, your your value when you want to have an exit of when you have a monetized exit at some point in the future. You know, like you know, 
Um, if if a, a buyer is going to want to invest in the business that has systems, so the systems can work the business, so the buyer is going to come in and like, do everything himself or herself. And um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the the book, uh, the the E Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, the the E Myth as in the Entrepreneur Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. It's a great book, everyone. I definitely encourage you all to go out and buy it. You know, and and also um, look into the Grand Cardone world there's a lot of great stuff there for entrepreneurs a hundred percent marie is a is a real live example of that a success story and yep. um uh but just like michael gerber the e three visited preaches a lot of the same just a business needs to have systems a business needs to have systems regardless of the business and because like those systems are foundation like a really a, a systemless yes. business is really just you know someone owning a job and there's going to be a lot of chaos and uh there's money being lost uh growth is going to be stunted resale value is down and so as you were talking about your your positive experience with um the the grand cardone world marie what was really present for me is just the importance of one right like the expression of you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with and, yes. and so you know if you like you know if you're going to surround yourself with someone who's uh, very successful like you know grant cardone and his network already that's a good decision whatever it costs i don't i don't know what it costs and and we don't need to talk about that but like but like whatever because it's a, it's an investment right it's an investment yes like just like, like as a like, uh, like one of the common tra- again getting back to like you know common to not like common trends amongst you know failures and success stories like uh, a common trend among success stories is these people Mm-hmm. surround themselves with people that are already successful, that are more successful than them and have the humility to be okay with that. It's like, yeah, like Grant Cardone is more successful than me. Uh, but I, so yes. I, I, I'm not going to say, oh, like, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embrace that. I want to learn from him. I want to be his student. right? And, and okay, so now surround yourself with winners, with successful people and observe them. Uh, listen to them, take their advice, observe their day to day, Listen mm-hmm. to them, take their advice, trust it, and implement it yourself. And give it a, you know, now like here comes that entrepreneurial like thing that we do, right? We're in the laboratory testing experiments, right? Like <laughs> yes. try, fail, try, fail, like what works, what, you know? But it's like the invet, like going to a Grand Cardone, I, I, I don't want to put him in the same bucket as like uh, Anthony Robbins, because like, I don't know, like, like I'm sure that they're- Yeah, yeah they're kind of different, yeah. Yeah, like, um, yeah, but like, you know, investing in um, uh, business, development, um, uh, things like that. Um, you know, it, it's one thing to pay the money and to go through it. Um, but as you know, Marie, that's not enough. Then you got to implement it. You right. got to implement it and it's yes, not going to happen yes. overnight. It's going to be shorter for some people more than others. Like some people are going to struggle with it and maybe take a year or two, then something's going to click. Um, yeah. and if someone's just going to come right like, like you, like, you know, after three, four or five months, like, you know, you're, you know, but trust, Trust the advice of the successful people who have been successful, right? You invested in learning from them and they must be successful for a reason. What are those things that, you know, listen to their advice, really listen to it, implement it, and then give it time to percolate, whether that's a few months or whatever. And that is so important. Like that is so like, that is so important to increasing your chance of being successful in business. And, and, um, Wow, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just, I just love talking about it because, you know, I like, I just, I see so many people failing out there, and, um, and, uh, and, and people, you know, like, you know, okay, so now like, we'll pivot specifically to the CPA world. Um, you know, there are a lot of like, there's a big opportunity here for you, Marie. There's a big opportunity, and you see it, and um, oh. <laughs> you see it, and you're executing on it, and so I commend you for that. Um, Thank you. But you know, I mean. And it's not just CPAs; it's it's, it's all business owners out there. But, um, you know, do you want to make the investment? Like, do you really want to get better, or do you really want to just like exactly. you know, make excuses and be a sob story? Because winners, winners want to be around winners. Winners, when when we start hearing people making excuses and stuff like that, like at, like for me as a, as a business owner, you know, like I, I have empathy. Like I'm not some like cold blooded killer. Don't get me wrong, but like <laughs> when, it, when when it comes to business. You know, like I've been around long enough to where it's like where I can like I, I gravitate towards positive, successful, you know, yes. winners. Um, and uh, and I just I, I'm allergic. I'm allergic to negativity. I'm <gasps> allergic to excuses and stuff like that. 
you know, and I'm sure maybe not in my exact words, right? But to, to in some, you know, someone like a Grant Cardone uh, would probably agree with that statement. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Me too. I I have really high energy. I'm always naturally like super uh, hyper positive and and yeah, I feel like negative people around you would, would really drain you. Um, and uh, one of the things that, you know, I do uh, in the firm and, and it's something that I've done it before, but like I would do it in my with my accounting team back when I was in my uh, uh, my employers. Uh, but here in my team as well, we do it every day, like, you know, 20, 20 minute catch up on what we're working on and really leave the, the meeting with a lot of energy, positive, because we want to help our clients, want to keep the positive energy going. And, you know, even if things are going <laughs> <laughs> wrong let's say technical issues other issues we're just going to push through it we're not going to drop the ball and it's going to happen if you keep that positive energy going and, and you're just going to keep that flow going you you know it's going to happen right um for example a lot of like you said business owners they just just drag themselves down and then they pass it on to their team so how as a leader you expect your team to be positive if you can't keep yourself positive so if I start, you know, feeling sorry for myself because something went wrong or uh, then how is my team going to stay positive? How is my team going to take care of my clients? If I'm feeling all sorry for myself, something went wrong. Something's going to go wrong all the time. It's a business. It's a, there's always something going to happen. Um, but uh, as long as you push through and keep yourself as positive as you can, you know, do a motivational quick something. And there's, uh, let's say there's some websites there, they'll send you a motivational uh, note every day. Like just sign up for something, help yourself. Do a meditation every morning, uh, you know, whatever helps you. Um, I mean, for me, uh, I'm naturally like that, but let's say, but on top of that, let's say I do morning prayers, meditation, whatever it is to help keep me going on that positive course because there's just so much negative already in the world. Like, I just don't need it to keep me down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. So, so true. Yeah, like, um, what I've, like, you know, like, I, I, I mean, I, I've, people that follow me that I've talked to that I know that, you know, like, like they know my story, like they know my story. I've lost a lot of weight. I've really transformed myself as an individual um, and as a business owner over the last, really the last half decade, mainly, mainly the last three years. And one, like, and I've just, and I've known this, but I really have taken it into truth in my day-to-day -day practices um that, that like this thing called being a human being on planet earth is is, is hard it's hard no yeah. matter what no matter what <laughs> and as the buddhists say life is suffering and i agree with that like life by default is suffering and so d don't get too high don't get too low but like but like like um and uh you know like uh a part of like 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 a, a natural just a, a truth about being a human being is that through our daily actions however we do it right like there are people that are very religious there are people that are very um you know they're very disciplined in other ways and and like whatever it is right just like whatever you got to do as a human being on this earth and i forget about business right like this is like like this is right like, right boom like now this is like you know the the life coach podcast with mike reader and <laughs> like like um yes. like what, what, whatever, whatever you got to do to just you know, keep it together, stay positive, be the best version of yourself, be better than who you were yesterday. Um, like whatever negative thoughts in your mind, like when, cause they will pop up, like that's ego talking, just like act through them. Like, um, that's just a fact of life. And, and so like, you know, like, like, like when I like, and, and, and like one of the most selfish things any of us can do, it's like when we got some things going on, we got to talk to someone. Yes, I get it. Right. But like, you know, yes. but we also have our, like our loved one, our supports, you know, our family and our friends for that type of, of stuff. Um, when, when that stuff is coming into the business world so much, it's like, it's, it's a red flag because you got to understand people like everyone's got that stuff. Everyone's got that stuff. So you got to yes. check in at the door. And, um, and so uh, wow, I mean, just so much powerful stuff right there, Marie. Um, my mind is just like, I, I, there's just so, <laughs> like you and I, we can talk like for like, we can have a substantive conversation for a long time, like Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan yeah. style, like, you know, three hours and stuff. But um, how much do you love being a business owner? I mean, forget about the money, like whatever money you're making, like, like for this question, that's not important. 
and you know and and by the way people like being self-employed is is beneficial it like the internal revenue like the internal revenue code is written for the self-employed taxpayer not the not the w2 taxpayer just fyi people out there but the lifestyle how much do you love the lifestyle maria being self-employed being your own boss i actually love it because it does give me that flexibility to do what i need to do at any point in time and one of the reasons only one of them <laughs> was to have that flexibility and the freedom to be with my kids um, anytime I needed to. Uh, one of the things that was so difficult for me when I was working for someone was my son was gonna was going to graduate the same day that I was supposed to be at a conference, <laughs> and I was talking to my um, supervisor at the time, the CEO, uh, that you know, hey, can I leave just an hour and a half before the conference finishes just so I can make it to my son's graduation. And the, the, the look I got was like uh, very disappointing. And I barely made it to my son's graduation. And he was it was kindergarten. But hey, you know, it's important that I, and I shouldn't have to have that much pressure to choose between the two. And that was that was a real, um, you know, I was like, no, I'm not I'm not. I'm not doing this. So that was one of the really biggest reasons that I felt like I needed to step out of and be on my own uh, more than ever. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then the money is, is just just not as important at this point. But yes, the opportunities, though, of possibilities, the opportunities of making more is there. But it does take you a while to get there. So anyone trying to start a business and thinking suddenly you're going to get it big, you're going to make millions the first year, let's put it that way. It's not going to happen the first year, probably the, you know, five years, seven years, maybe down the line. But, you know, just be patient, be graceful to yourself and hang in there. But if you're looking for that flexibility and you want to have that freedom and uh, the lifestyle you can build down the line, just it's definitely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a... Uh, um... Uh, 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 I was listening to a Jordan Peterson podcast um, like one or two years ago, and he was like uh, talking about uh, there was an experiment, like uh, there was a, a, a there was an experiment, there was a study that he was talking about how like once once human beings have enough money coming in to keep the bill collectors at bay, then then money like, well, it's always important, right? And like I mean, like, right, right. Make, like, like don't like you know like you know hey people like don't get me wrong, don't get Marie wrong, like 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 we want yeah. to make money, like we want to make money, like, <laughs> like let's let's be intentional and honest about that. Like we're not yes. some, we're no we're not some you know uh, tree hugging people. Like uh, I don't want to like you know sh I, I love all my tree huggers out there, so I'm sorry, but um, yeah. but like hey like okay we want to make money, like don't get us wrong, we want to 10x we that bank, we want to 100x that bank account, all right, like. Over yes. here. All right. With that being said, um, a big part of being a business owner, being an entrepreneur is lifestyle and, you know, being able to just like take the day off and like go to your son's yes. graduation. And and like, you know, like because like you're the boss, you call the shots. You don't have to answer to like your your uh, your, uh, you know, your stressed out like CEO because like your stressed out CEO has got something going on in his or her life. And like they're going to project that stuff on you and and they don't care about your son's graduation. And um, so like. Uh, um, and, 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 but like, and so success, right? Like Marie brought up a good point, like set expectations. Like you're not gonna make a million dollars in day one, unless you're a guru. And like, most of us are not gurus. I'm not a guru for sure. And, um, or, or, or like, you know, prodigy and, um, focus on just bringing in enough money to keep the bill collectors at bay, to be able to <laughs> yeah. live, like, like do that, like do that. Yeah. Like, and repeat, and, and, and repeat and repeat and repeat repeat, and repeat. that's success yeah. like that's success and then and then to marie's point the the opportunity for making more money in my opinion there's 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 no there's there's more opportunity and content and potential to make money if you execute right if you do things like marie is doing with everything that she's doing with the profit lab and everything and you know her her um uh her business strategies and and systems that she's putting into place for herself and her clients because of Grant Cardone's teachings like all that stuff is going to help increase the revenue producing opportunity but there's there's more opportunity when you can when, when you are self employed so just keep the bill collectors at bay enjoy the mm -hmm. lifestyle and then mm -hmm. have a better potential to make more money and so like we'll we'll close on this like um like i i, I always talk about this like 
What I love about the business owner, the business owner lifestyle is that it gives me a lifestyle of, it, it, it creates, it, it gives me more abundance in my life, right? Abundance in the context of like, you know, yes. money, of course, but like ultimately it gives me more uh, abundance of just like control and autonomy of my schedule. And it allows me the opportunity to spend more time with my family and, and just enjoy life. Like I work to live. I don't live to work. I love what I do, but I ultimately work <laughs> live good point and, right and so like as i tell people like like ultimately like like like, the, like my purpose in life like really um you know and then and then as i as i grow like um you know like as i have more discretionary income then of course you know you know doing more in contributions and helping others all of that becomes just like inevitably you know more important like as you have more discretionary income um but um all I want to do is just between now and the day I die, I want to spend as much time. I want to spend as much time with the people that I love. Done. Yeah. Done. But that's it. Like that's my. That's what I want to do in my life. I, between now and the day I die, I want to spend as much time creating memories with the people that I love. Like that's all. And so, business ownership, self-employment is my. You know, it creates a vehicle that allows me to have that abundance. And so, um, you know. Uh, would love to just, you know, hear what's present for you on this whole topic, Marie. I know it's a lot of uh, macro level stuff, but. Um, oh, no, I love it. Take us I, home, I mean, Marie, take us home. <laughs> <laughs> OK, no, no, I'm with you on that one. It's the same for me. I mean, one of the things that um, I've always thought about, especially like I mean, growing up in Lebanon in war, you know, most of the time you're you're just trying to survive, right? Like you just don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> any day is your last day any minute is your last day because a bomb can fall on you and so my my uh purpose as well it's basically like if god gives me life to live until i don't know 80 90 whatever year i just want to say the day that i'm gonna die is that hey i lived my life to the fullest i made a lot of great memories i don't i don't care to say i had millions i want to say that i lived my life to the fullest so that that could be I traveled, could be I, you know, anything I did with my family that it was an experience that I, you know, because when I was in Lebanon, all my experience was war. <laughs> so for me, that is that is the, the the purpose, you know, you know, and I've always thought of that as well. So yeah, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. So everyone, uh, so Marie, thank you so much for being here. Everyone, Marie Tarosian, she's out of Miami, entrepreneur, the Profit Lab, CPA, helping other CPAs, helping other business owners. Um, you know, you like, uh, you know, everyone, like, I'm gonna go on a little rant right here. It's like, like I got my video edit, my video editing team, and you know, they'll put up, you know, all of Marie's uh, website and LinkedIn. But come on, people, it's 2022. Like, here's Marie Tarosian. You know how to find her. Use this thing called the internet. Find her. She's doing great things. You're a business owner and you need help with anything that we just talked about. And let's be honest, like you do, like, you know, so many people like think they don't, but like people, trust me, you do, you need this stuff. Like be honest with yourself. Like you need this stuff. If you want to increase your chance of being successful in business, reach out to Marie Tarosian. Thank me later. Marie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Bye.